Hello everyone and welcome to the 59th Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering how we can work with view-based NS table views with Coco bindings. So this uh, tutorial you'll notice is actually somewhat of a dumbed down version of the previous tutorials that we've done. Uh, the code I'm going to mostly just run through what I have, um, I've already explained, you know, the desktop entity and the app delegate multiple times in like the last six tutorials on view based NS table views. So, um, you know, pardon my absence of explanation, but you can hopefully bridge the gap between what I have here and, uh, you know, you can change the code. Of course, these projects are always on my GitHub page. So feel free to go and download the source code if you get lost. So again, this project will be up on there as well. All right, so what are we kind of doing in this tutorial? Well, like I said, we're going to be using bindings. Let's just, uh, you know, check back to where we left off in lesson 58 since it's been a little while. And this is what we had in lesson 58. We had uh, two different text or uh, table cell views. We had one that displayed the image, and then we had another one that displayed the groups. And this is kind of important, right? Uh, that this was, you know, this was a pretty complex application, and it uh, did a lot of cool things. So um, this, you know, this is what we had before. The difference with bindings, however, is that at least to my knowledge, there's no real way of having more than one type. So um, what we're going to be doing is essentially getting rid of this group heading, and we're just going to be displaying all these images. So that will be what we have in our example. Now, yeah, with that said, let's just go ahead and see how we can work with bindings. So I'm going to close out of lesson 58, come back to lesson 59. What we have here is basically the exact same copy of what we had in lesson 53. Uh, the difference being is uh, a very important one though, is that this cell, the identifier has to be changed to be automatic. So just go over to uh, the identity inspector over here and then change the identifier to be automatic. So you can just delete the text that you had in there and it'll be automatic by default. All right, this is important because if you don't do this, at least I cannot figure out a way to get the bindings to detect the cell if uh, it wasn't automatic. So if you figure out a way, cool, let me know, but uh, just make sure you do that before continuing with this. All right, then everything else is pretty self-explanatory. We have a little remove button down here. All right, uh, the desktop entity class was changed to be uh, rather simplified. Basically, it's just one class now has a file URL, a string for the name, and an image type. And that was basically just all merged together into one. So previously, we had those three different classes. I essentially just merged the desktop entity into a single class. And the reason I can do this is because I'm only representing the images. I don't have the groups or the folders and the images. I just have the images. So I figured I would just make a single desktop entity. All right, um, with that, this is the code that is in desktop entity. It's pretty much just copied in, again, I just merged the three classes sort of into one, um, of course, simplifying a lot of the behavior though. All right, so that's the code. Again, you can find this all in GitHub or you can just you know merge it right now into a single desktop entity class. All right, um, with that, we can now check out the app delegate. Uh, the app delegate, I moved the contents into a property. So now the table view contents is a property. It doesn't really matter. It wasn't really required, but um, I did it for the sake of this anyway. Then there's also uh, an array controller property. It's not connected right now, but I'm just throwing it in here because we I'll show you something later when we connect the NS array controller, which is what we use for bindings. We'll connect that later and that will help us with uh, a few things and I'll, I'll show you that in just a bit. In appdelegate.m or implementation section, um, I've changed uh, to simplify the code quite a bit. So you'll notice in this top section, instead of putting this in application did finish launching, I now just overrode the table contents uh, getter. So basically what this means is that when we're using um, Cocoa bindings, Whenever, uh, you know, instead of relying on the application to complete the array in time, we'll just use lazy instantiation to actually generate the, the array whenever it's being asked for. 
So whenever the bindings are being set up, we can guarantee that the array will be created. So what this does is basically it says, if the table contents already exist, in other words, we've already alloc-init our table contents, then just return the array that we have. If uh, that array hasn't been created though, we will create it. And uh, this code is almost the exact same as the ones that we had in the previous tutorials. I'm just going through and getting the IHAT icons. The only real difference here is that I have some code essentially to determine whether we have a directory or not. And um, this is just a way of uh, ciphering out or filtering out any of the folders. So what we get from this directory enumerator, right, is we, we are going through the iChat icons folder, but then each one of those has folders for the uh, country flags or the masks or all those different things. So this code is just going to go through all the different directories that we have, and we're doing a check right here to determine whether or not we are a directory. And if it's not a directory, then we will add it, right? If, in other words, if it's not a folder, and AK, it's an image file, then we'll add that to our table contents array. So that's what we want to do. So this check is just looking at the file URL, checking to see if it's a directory by checking the URL is directory key. And this is something that all NS URLs have. And then uh, we pass that in with, by reference. And then we can also uh, check that when it's uh, here. We just check to see if the directory, which is our number, is returned. If it's not a directory, then we will add it to the table contents. And then when all that's said and done, of course, we have to return our table contents here as well. All right, so that's pretty much the only real changes that I've made to this application. Again, feel free to download that code if uh, you get lost at all. Um, there's a few other changes. Located in Finder uh, is actually the same. The remove, however, um, you'll see that I have two different sort of ways lined out. And this commented code is something I'll talk about in just a bit. But um, forgetting that for now, uh, we'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and set up some bindings, which is what you guys came here for. So uh, to do this, we can go ahead and add an NS array controller, which is always what you need to add when you're working with table views and arrays. So basically, we have our array controller and the array controller's job is to handle um, all the contents of the array. So anything that you add or remove the table view or sorry, the NS array controller will handle those changes for you. And of course, it can deal with bindings. As a side note, if you haven't checked out any of my bindings tutorials, make sure you go back and watch the original ones for uh, the cell-based NS table views, because I definitely explain um, array controllers and stuff, uh, or bindings in general, more there. So this is already this is already under the assumption that you understand bindings uh, to that extent. So this is really just showing you how to set up bindings with view-based NS view-based NS table views. All right, so once we have our NS array controller, there's a few things we have to do. First off, the array controller has to know the contents that it's going to be managing. So to do that, you go to the bindings inspector on the NS array controller. We check out the content array. The content array is the contents that we want to be managing. So we're going to be controlling from our app delegate. So bind and the model key path is the table contents, which is the property that we have defined on the app delegate, right? The app delegate has a table contents property, which is our mutable array. And we will just give that to the NS table view, or the, sorry, NS array controller. All right, so good, we've bound that. The next step is to actually bind the table view itself to be managed by the array controller, which is a little bit different than what we do in cell based ones. So what you want to do is click once that gets you the scroll view, click again, that will get you the table view, you'll know that you have the table view when you have the table view thing right up here. Or you can just check to make sure that you are actually operating in the table view. Once you have that, go to the bindings inspector, you'll notice that it has an option down here for table content and the table content you want to be the managed part of the array controller. So you bind this to the array controllers arranged objects. 
So the array controller manages the array. The table view is going to ask the array controller or vice versa to get the arranged objects that are in the array, uh, the array controller. All right, so that's the second binding that you have to make. Now the third and final binding that you have to make, or sort of the third uh, subset, I guess, is to bind the contents in the table cell view. So once you, you can click the table cell view, then you want to select the individual components that you want to manage. So basically click on the table. Uh, this is the NS text field that we're managing. This is the, the text view. And um, so if I go to bind this, I want to bind the value of this text field. And what we're binding it to is actually the table cell view. So this is, again, this is different than cell based. So what we have again is the array controller managing all our content. Then the table view essentially talks to the array controller to figure out the content that it's going to be displaying. And the table view's job is actually then to uh, propagate the, the table cell views with their content. So th this is sort of an interesting thing, but you'll see that uh, what this starts out with, and this is actually, this should show up by default when you go to make this binding, is you want to bind to the table cell view, but it starts out with the object value. And what the object value is, is it represents the desktop entity or the object that you're managing with the array, right? So in the array, we have all these desktop entity objects and the desktop entity, just as a reminder, has this name and image property. And so what we're what we're actually putting in as contents is the object values name, so or the desktop entity's name. So we can throw that in, and that just will get the desktop entity's name. You might be able to guess for the image, we want to do the same thing. We're going to bind to the table cell view, and we want to bind the image. So again, we're binding basically the desktop entity's image value and the name value to both the uh, image view and the text field, and then we're good. So that should be pretty much everything. Another thing that I have uh, set up is in the app delegate, I made a property for the array controller. So I'm actually just going to bind that right now. So I'll control drag from the app delegate to the array controller, and I will connect the array controller. All right, so that, that last little thing wasn't necessary for actually getting the stuff to display, but I'm going to come back to what I just did there in a bit. But if you go ahead and build and run this, you'll see that we actually have a working table view. So uh, we didn't do all that much code. We really just set up the objects that need to be displayed. We propagated the stuff into the array, and then we just let the NS array controller manage how all the cells are going to be displayed with their contents. So. Uh, you'll notice that our remove button, it does work, So, um, and I'm actually just logging out the number of stuff so you can ignore what's in the printout right now, but anyway, you can see that removing, and I can remove multiple objects, right, this all still works using the array controller. All right, so if I go into my app delegate, and I'm just gonna get rid of that line that I was printing out the count. So basically, what we have here is uh, the same way that we were removing objects before. So we're going into the array directly, we remove the indexes that were selected, and the table view, we make the animation happen uh, on the table view. Now, this might seem odd to you if you kind of remember the whole point of using the array controller. The array controller, right, is kind of supposed to be the one that's managing all this for us, and this is kind of the weird thing that I'm not uh, to, you know, I'm not a huge fan of here with the view-based NS table view. So in cell, in cell-based NS table view, it kind of worked nicely. The array controller really did control the array. However, if you do this in cell-based or in view-based rather NS table views, and you want to have animations happen, this doesn't work so well. So what we're doing here is we made that connection to the array controller. That's the one that's in our nib file. And there's, um, you know, NS array controller has a method called remove objects at arranged object indexes, and that just removes, you know, whatever objects are at the specific indexes. And this is, you know, fine, and you'll see that it actually works if we go to build and run this. However, you'll notice that there is no animation, right? So if I can select multiple things, I can remove multiple things. The only problem is there's no animation. And the reason for this, right, is that the array controller is managing how the you know how objects are removed 
and that used to be fine, right? Except when you want an animation, then there's no real way of getting one. So I'm just, what I'm really showing you here is that there's two different ways about going, uh, going about removing objects. One, you're going to get animation, the other you're not. And uh, again, this is kind of, you know, this is where you start to see how Coco is a little bit breaking down with this NS array controller stuff and view based NS table views. It worked well when we had, uh, you know, we had some cell based NS table views in the past, but now that we have these more complex view based NS table views, you see that bindings really starts to break down unless you have a rather simple example. But anyway, uh, hopefully this, you know, summed up how you can use bindings in NS table views. There's really only three bindings you have to make one between the array controller and the array content, then between the table view and the array controller, and then between each cell, table cell views uh, contents. So that's pretty much all you have to do with that. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below, and please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next tutorial.